k into n where n is the normal force acting on block A and uh, mu k is coefficient of kinetic friction. Now again the value of mu k will depend on the nature of surfaces which are in contact. So for a given pair of surface there are two value of coefficient of friction one is mu s which is uh, coefficient of static friction and uh, mu k which is coefficient of kinetic friction so now if uh, if we write the equation of motions for block a we can write that f minus f r is equal to m a where uh, m is the mass of block a and a is the acceleration generally the value of static friction is slightly higher than the value of kinetic friction but uh, if nothing is specifically mentioned then uh, we can take the value of static friction as equal to value of kinetic friction which will mean that mu k is equal to mu s that is coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to coefficient of static friction now let's see what is the total reaction force acting on a surface the total reaction force acting on a surface is the vector sum of normal reaction and the force of friction acting on the same surface so suppose there's a block which is kept on a surface and the block is moving in the left hand direction so the force of friction acting on the block is fr which will be in the right hand direction and the force of friction acting on the surface is again fr which is acting in the left hand direction now here n is the normal reaction acting on the block so the total reaction force that is s which is acting on the block will be equal to vector sum of normal reaction that is n plus friction force that is fr now if the angle between normal reaction and total reaction is lambda then this angle lambda is called angle of friction and uh, the coefficient of friction between these two surfaces that is between the block and uh, the surface mu will be equal to 10 lambda now we'll see how to find the direction of friction force to find the direction of friction force which is acting on a surface which is in contact with some other surface first we'll assume that the surfaces are perfectly smooth that is there is no friction between them then we'll see that what is the possible direction of relative motion between them and then the direction of friction force will be such that it will oppose this relative motion and this friction force will act on both the surfaces it will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Now we will start the chapter application of Newton's law. So first we will see a typical pulley system and then we will discuss how can we apply the Newton's law in a pulley system. So this is our typical pulley system. You can see a pulley here this is your pulley around which a string is attached this is string and uh, on the both ends of the string there are some masses attached this is mass m1 sorry mass m2 and this is mass m1 so this is our typical pulley system now let's go through various assumptions and uh, facts about the pulley system the thread used in the pulley system is ideal thread that is it is massless it is inextensible and it is flexible also the ideal pulley system is frictionless system now the same thread bears the same tension so for example here we have a pulley system which has one thread now the tension in 
this thread will be equal to T and uh, the same tension will be there throughout this thread so tension here will be T and so is the tension here so as, y as you can see that the value of the tension remains the same throughout the thread now in any part of the thread the tension is applied at both the ends and towards the center of that part so if you take if you take any part of the thread suppose we take this part so this is the part of thread that we have taken so the tension will be applied at both the ends so a tension will be applied at this end as well as at this end and the direction of tension will be such that it is directed towards the center of this part so a tension T will be applied at the end A and the tension T will be applied at end B as we have, al we have already seen that the same tension runs through the entire thread so the value of tension will be same and this tension force will be towards the center of this thread the thread tension acts on the object with which the end of that part is connected so in this pulley system we have two objects M1 and M2 which is connected uh, with the thread so the tension T will act on both the object now the thread is inextensible so the total thread length remains constant also the thread cannot